Hello and how are you? My name is Winnie Barawa and if you're new in our channel, this is Medic Academy where we discuss knowledge and causes or lectures in the different arena of health. So in today's class, we're going to focus on gender analysis process. And if you're joining us, um, this has been a series on gender analysis. We started by introducing it. If you've not watched that video, then you can access it in our list. And in today's class, we are going to see how gender analysis occurs as a process. So we'll use the three-step process to go through the class. So let's start with the first step where we talk about step one is about um, collect available data. So being a systematic process, it means when you're conducting the gender analysis, there are certain steps you need to understand and you need to know how to get your knowledge in place or your data in place before you make up the final decision. And remembering that gender analysis is a method you use to collect data about men and women so that you can make up a conclusive approach and come up with better interventions, then for you to find that conclusion, you need to first collect the data. So collect available data, and the data can be different aspects of this gender. It could be you want to collect data in terms of policies and gender needs, which is still okay, or you want to understand current situations in a community. The data also that you may be collecting could be generally any relevant sex-related data in a certain context. For example, uh, in the arena of COVID-19, for instance, some people had an interest of understanding how COVID is affecting men compared to women. And someone will just want to understand that, you know, getting relevant sex data in given context. And then at the end of the day, after collecting this data, then you need to, you know, draw the existing comparison between the qualitative and the quantitative findings. So more, some researchers prefer conducting qualitative, you know, data, while others prefer collecting quantitative data. That is still okay. But as you're doing the data collection in terms of gender aspects, then you can decide on your own if you want to do either qualitative or quantitative, but just understand and be able to rule it out what, what your, your data is. Is it qualitative or quantitative? And uh, as you keep the data collection, you can collect as much data as you need, provided it captures the gender issues that you are focused on. So this mostly will get guided by your objectives and the reasons why you are doing the gender analysis. And of course, once your data is okay and you are sure you have collected enough, then you can establish a baseline. A baseline is what we can say in simple words, the understanding and the, and the view that you, you have gotten from the data that you have generated in your first instance or in your first step. And most of the time they say baseline will guide you into your next step and the next action that you will take. So it started off with the step one and it said here, we're going to collect the available data. In step two, you're told you need to establish gender differences and underlining causes of the gender inequality. Remember, we defined gender analysis as a process that allows us to collect data about men and women and establish their differences. So you're not conducting gender analysis as a blank research. You're conducting gender analysis with the purpose of getting information about men and women and create what is their differences between these two. So now you've collected data in step two, in step one, sorry. In step two, the second thing you need to do now is to establish the differences. So you've had this particular data or information, now you sit down and establish that differences and if you find any difference in that particular situation or context you need to give us what could have caused that difference or rather what you're saying in our step what is the underlining cause of the gender inequality so what do you do here you number one is identify the gaps so what are the missing gaps and then go ahead examine differences and inequalities in men and women. So these differences can be in different aspects. 
prior we had mentioned activities could be the differences in the economic status could be their differences in terms of their roles and time use there could be there's a difference in terms of livelihood and all those things so your work is to identify those gaps and then say what is causing all these differences so integrate the relevant gender issues the gaps and the inequality so that you can have a clear problem analysis so let's talk about let's say the kenyan context that we are in and you find currently there's a high tax increment that is ongoing in the country and you can ask yourself what is the differences between men and women in this current situation and if you realize that women in kenya maybe earn way less than women than the men then you may sit down and say what is causing all this uh, how do we uh, establish this problem statement and how do we have an understanding what is causing it and then keep on exploring and uh, bring more men and women to participate in your in your analysis so that you can get a very a bigger view of the real situation in the different sectors and the last step in gender analysis process is for you to have informed policies programs and projects so you have collected data in step 2 you have analyzed your data and you've come up with the differences between men and women and you've been able to now come down and establish what is causing the differences so in the last step of, of of gender analysis process is now to come up with solutions or what you can say in in short form implementation so you want to come up with informed policies programs and project this is a solution stage you want to um, let's say you want to break the gap or you want to create equality you want to promote equal access of opportunities and all that so what you do in this last stage is you can decide to hold consultation and mostly i want to consult with experts in the various gaps that you've identified if the gap is on financial differences then you don't want to consult with people who are not in finance you know you rather consult with the financial as aspects i mean experts or economists or people who understand community and gender gaps in finance talk with the targeted groups or stakeholders that can give you a clear next step in regards to the information and the data that you've got you've, you've gathered and collected and now you want to solve the particular problem and finally when you have gotten all the information you need from people who are informed people who understand what you're doing you want now to draft either a program or a policy and here we are only referring to which solution are you settling for so if you want to settle for a solution that maybe will break your gap that you've identified then you want to really look at your program or your intervention and see what are the expected outcome that the that the program or the implementation will have on either men or and women so even if you set all of a particular program you will still need to understand what is the impact that that project will have on the men versus the women so that you also don't come up with an intervention that you think will solve but that maybe may promote more gender differences so that's the reason why we talk about making informed informed means you do you do consultations you do more more in you gather more information about the particular issue before you bring on board a solution or an intervention and then go ahead now implement your work so if it's a project you get it to the community you work around with the men and women let it get implemented but don't forget to monitor and evaluate like we've said you want to see that your program will have a positive impact both on men and women and it will not create further gaps between the two so in this case you want to monitor and evaluate looking at in terms of the intervention what are the benefits what are the negatives and then get feedback from the same people you are working with and be responsive when they give you feedback don't assume or don't just brush it off and feel like maybe they don't need your input you need to ensure that all these people are involved and they appreciate your project because it is bringing the outcome that is breaking the gender gap that are in our society or communities and so if you still like our content and it's really motivating to you to participate in our classes feel free to subscribe to our channel you can comment what you like the most in this class and uh, till next time thank you so much for staying till the end bye bye and let's meet again in our next class